So, hello everyone. Welcome back. Um, it's part 11 on the uh, the opening link, but we're actually at part 10, I think. I just checked. So I've got to change that uh, when we come out. I'm just getting some brushes together for what I need. Um not going to need that. I'm going to need that one. I'm not sure whether it's... Um. Right, so uh, we're very close to buttoning this up. And in the last... In the, oh, i got a thumbs up already. Somebody's very optimistic about how this is going to go. Hi, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the optimist? Somebody's obviously expecting this to go very well. I'm impressed. Um, so, yeah, we were ready to button this up. And I was deciding what to do about Mr. Jan Zambuk here, um, or Zumbak. Uh, and I thought I'd give him, I'd paint him up, and then I'd, I'd see how he looked afterwards, and, and then... Uh, see whether we're going to put him in now actually i'm quite surprised um detail wise and body wise that it's come out really quite good better than i'd hoped for um the face is what we're doing today um face is my weakest uh my weakest link if you like uh it's, it's where i struggle whether he goes in this plane or not will all depend on the next 20 40 minutes whatever uh but body work let's see if we can see if i can get uh, you to have a look at don't worry about the boots they're not uh, done yet let me do that so body wise Is he going to focus in? There we go. Not too bad. Added some darker areas on the trousers to make you know, look a bit like, uh, to try and look a bit like shadow and oil and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, a bit of a mix of tones there, which I hope came through well. Um, and then... I'm glad I changed that buckle in the middle to a silver colour because the brass colour just didn't look good. Um, it, the brass colour wasn't very brassy, let's put it that way. Um, and as you can see, the face is uh, no good at the moment. He looks like he's uh, wearing lipstick and he looks like he's been for a car somewhere. So that we're going to look at now. I'm going to try and do that. And for that, I'm going to use the Citadel range of paints. Um, in particular, I'm going to start with, um, I think I'm going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm going to try that. This stuff is very thick. Um, I don't know how, how thick this one is, but we may thin it down a bit. I don't like these lids. They are an absolute pain. Um, in fact, some of them I chop this, I try and cut this little thing off at the back. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But they are a nightmare. They just, especially when they're new. I don't know who designed them. I really don't. 
but uh, see this one's not too bad because it will stay up like that but then it starts dripping and you've got to Oh, there's a horrible lump of paint there. Yeah, let's just go with it. Let's just try and get this. It's quite thick. So first of all, I'm just going to come in and cover everything apart i'm going to try and miss the very center of the eyes out because and try and leave a little patch around where the eyebrows go just as a guide obviously i it may not work, but I am using these uh, the Artificia layer brushes by Citadel for this. Use these for detail work, particularly on um, and not just detail work, on aeroplanes. It's generally just figures. These brushes I use these for because I've paid so much for them um, right so we are going to come around and clean up on the inside of this hat that's not a problem A better finishing we've got already it look so now we've got to wait for that to dry um, then I'm going to try and put a tiny little bit of white just in where the eyes are and maybe uh, a little bit of light brown to try and just bring out the although I may just use um, once that's dry I may just use Reichland flesh shade to try and bring out a little, little bit of detail there is on the face and that may may pick out the eyebrows to be honest there's not a lot of detail there it's very soft um i actually had to use my um knife i had to use the uh craft knife to um cut away some of the front of the eyes because there was uh, there was no shape to them at all it was like there was little bits of plastic just sticking out here and there and I actually had to try and cut that away a bit which actually does you can see if you look close but um, that's interesting why has that come away there Tiny bit there. Apologies for you know you know you're not really going to see much because the camera doesn't zoom in very well and really honestly to see anything you've got to be sort of there. So he's got to go to one side. Although we may as well while we're at it just paint his boots now. Uh, let me find a colour. We want a rubber black, really. 
got one. Flat black would do. Well, no, it's not quite the same. There we go. Rubber black. Clean the brush as always when you come out of finishing what you're doing and uh, in most cases with these ones just uh, you know it's just wet and then touch it to the paper towel and twist and just twist and turn and pull it backwards and uh, you know you, when you've got a good brush the, the point will just fall into place um, have any problems at all keeping a point on it um, occasionally you'll need to give it a clean put some brush restorer on it get it back into shape i think i've had to do it once on one of these but generally you know they are good brushes i've got to give them that um now i'm just for this I'm gonna for the boots I'm gonna use rubber black XF eighty five and this stuff is really good it does actually look just like rubber um so it does what it says on the tin the looks like the lid has got stuck on the top there we go So I'm just going to add a couple of drops of the secret form. Is that a mix? And uh, away we go. Oops, I just realised the top of the boots are a different colour. My mistake. Um, you're not really going to see them, so sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and fill them in because you're not... I, I suppose if you really look carefully, you might see it. I'm only making this uh, building this kit to prove that it can be built into a nice kit. And just because somebody calls a kit shit or whatever. Or worse, if somebody tells you you can't build a kit. I've had that happen. I know other people that have had it happen to them. You know, somebody's turned around and said, oh, no, you can't build that. What do you want to build that for? You won't be able to. It's too complicated or too confusing or, you know. So I was told that. Uh, so I've kept the kit in question. And I am going to build that kit. And I'm going to make sure I do a damn good job of it.
So we got uh, Scar Modeling Channel, Frankie B. Hi. What range size brushes do you usually use for really fine detail figures? Well, um, I've got uh, a few that I use. Um, Frankie. Uh, so it depends on the size of the figure, really. But generally, um, uh, let, let me just finish with these boots and I will show you the brushes I use the most. And they, they go across all the different sizes, really. I don't have, like, a set brush for 124th, a set brush for 148th. Um, so I have a few brushes that I like to use, that I use all the time. And we're almost there, I'll be able to. right so when it comes to figures let me just get them ready So this is this one here is the same as the one I'm using here. Now these ones I buy quite a lot. Um, I normally buy them from Mike Jolly. They're about a pound each. They are Italeri's Double Zero uh, because they're so cheap. Um, they are really good brushes. Um, they keep their shape quite a lot. Um, again, it depends on how you look after them. If you don't look after them, they won't keep their shape quite a lot. But uh, compared to other brushes I've bought and other cheap brushes I've bought, they're far superior. Um, that's just my opinion. So I use them the, the most. Um, and I use, that, use them for other detail brushes as well. So the, the two or that I normally buy for this... Um, from Mike is normally the double zero and the number two That's the double zero That's the number two And I use them on uh, For body um, and stuff like that now for really really delicate stuff um, that uh, or you know or figures um in uh the, i use these artificial layer brushes these are from citadel this one's a small one and this one's a medium one just and there's not a lot of difference in them to be honest at the time i thought i'd get them both um yeah so it's just the bristles are a tiny bit shorter on the short one um and not by much either so as you can see they've got a really nice bristles on them i don't know what whether they're i think they're natural i don't know but that uh, and it, it holds its shape really well they both do um, that's what you pay for 
um they are dear these were 17 pound each um and they're available from the games workshop um because of their cost that's why i use them specifically for faces and uh details around the body such as buttons belts things like that now then for really really small detail um eyeballs eyelashes um eyebrows and you know when we're talking the really small stuff like that i got this um now believe it or not this is one of the cheapest brushes i've bought i paid £2.50, I think, for this on eBay. It's called the um, the Army Painter. It's a War Gamer, uh, the Psycho Brush. And it is, without a doubt, the finest um, brush point I've got on any brush I've ever bought. And it is insane how small detail you can do you can literally do a fine line with that um and uh yeah yeah so this is my go-to brush for example when when i come in to do the whites of the eyes in a minute i will use this um and even using this it will probably be too much for the the, the tiny section in there um, it's incredible, um, and so that, those are the brushes I use. But I'm not an expert at all. Um, I mean, it, it probably shows in my work, but um, there's, uh, you know, Gilbert uh, Mondragon's the guy to ask when it comes to questions about brushes for figures and stuff like that um if ever i've got any questions he's the man i go to it's okay oh dear the heat has not gone well with this um just i've just took this off the shelf it's it's not it's uh i don't think i've even I don't know if you're going to see that, but that's all lumpy. It's like porridge in the bottom. So that's the heat, or just because I've shook it up, or what? Let's see what it's like. Um, so you see, when you put a little bit on the end of the psycho brush. It looks massive when you when you've got that tiny little bit on there. Now, when I put this on here, I might need to. I might actually need to scrape that tiny little droplet off. Apologies, I'm going to have to go in close for this. Yeah, and the problem there is it has dried before I could get it. This time I'm going to put a small amount. On my paint palette or on my paint tile. There just enough. And then I'm going to put a little bit, oh dear, see that lid has just sprung open and white paint has spread, splattered everywhere. That is why I do not like those lids. Just put a little bit of, um,
little bit of brush um, trying to keep it a bit wet I don't know whether that Vallejo stuff will work So we've gone a little bit over the top on one eye and we're about right on the other one which I can correct some more flesh tone afterwards so you can see that one eye is okay the other eye's got way too much white on it I'm just going to come down to his neckerchief and see if we can get some white on that problem is that one drop of Vallejo flow improver may be enough to keep that that little bit of white wet for the rest of the day Right, so that's okay. What I'm going to do now is just come back in with a little bit of that Cadian flesh tone and try and tidy up that white a little bit. Can't really get in there with anything to wipe it away. Before we do that, I'm going to spend the time to make sure the brush is clean make sure it's got its point still on it vital that the brush is uh, in good condition otherwise you you, you won't get um, any good finish you will uh, end up with, or you could end up with two little tiny brushes at the end. Because um, what can happen is, if you're not careful how you clean them, so let me use my... So what, the, the, the br br bristles are tapered. They're actually cut and tapered when they put them in. They're not just all the same um, length and just bunched together. And, and they're, so they're, well, you get this point on, a br on the bristles of the brush that's like that and it's sort of spiraled like that. 
Now, what can happen if you don't clean it properly or you don't, you know, you don't treat it well, you can end up with um, something like that, where the tip, instead of being one tip like that, you end up with two. And then you find that when you're doing something delicate, both these tips are painting, you know, uh, their lines and you know you don't you don't need that that's a nightmare so when it use some brush restorer and uh, I have had brushes that I've had to throw away because they've, they've just once they've gone like that I can get them back um, not all of them you know just occasionally you'll get a brush that goes like that and it, you know you'll be able to get the point on it but the minute it dries it, it goes that way again um, so I've, I've thrown away so many brushes because I'm really fussy over the brushes. And if they won't hold their point, then I won't use them. I've got a whole, a whole tub in here of brushes that I don't or I've thrown out because they're no good. I keep them because they're handy for weathering. Um... But I've got some stuff, there's brushes I bought that I paid good money for and they're just not very reliable. I mean, taking one at random, uh, it, it won't, not only will it not point, but when you do get the point, it's sort of bent at the end and it's that's a Calibri brush. Um, another Calibri brush. Looks like it's had an electric shock. Let me see if I can find one that's doing what I said with the tips at the end where it's forked. I did say forked. There will be one in there somewhere. It's just uh, can't see it at the moment. I'll have to. I've got a. Um, I have got a tutorial on my channel for brush uh, restoration, brush cleaning. Um, you know, so if you want to, if you're interested in how to look after your brushes, then uh, go and have a look at that. Got to go. Sun's Championship Baseball game is starting. Look forward to watching the rest of the video later. Thanks for being so informative. Have a good day. Right. Thanks, Frankie, for coming in. Um, and I hope your son does well. Here we go again. So where did I... Right. See, even, even this now, I've just cleaned this and I put it in a point. But if we have a look, if you look at it very closely, you will see there's a stray strand. If I can find it. It's not going to pick it up. It is there, rest assured. I can see it. How long was that? It there, just there. It. Yeah, it's just on the tip. It's not the camera can't pick it up because it's so fine. So 
in that case you know i'm just gonna lick the end of the tip and just get it to get that point back there we go we're good to go right so i just want to clean up around the white of the eye And along the top of the bridge underneath. So underneath the eyebrow. I need a very steady hand for this. And then on the other side as well, just underneath. Desperately trying to keep my hand from shaking. <laughs> oh no, I shook a little bit just right at the end there. Just put a blodge on his where where it shouldn't be, but I think I might get away with that. So, we've got to come along and put an eyeball in in a minute. The face is a bit, um, that's because I've used, uh, I have used. paint too thick um so that you know that's my fault um what i can probably do is come along maybe i can put some water on it or um now i have tried this before and it worked now i know a lot of people are going to disagree with this but i'm going to give it a go on this um it's just a bit of self-leveling thinner i'm just going to damp the end of the brush in it take a little bit of it off and then come in on the face Just uh,
No, no, it's that was a stupid idea. I've I've done it before successfully with something else, but um, um, let me just try with a little bit of water to do the same thing. I don't have to. Actually, it's not a problem. I'm going to go with the self-leveling thing. I'm going to try and remove now. Remove that uh, facial. Let's get rid of some all that nasty, lumpy, bumpy stuff. I'm not, uh, I did say I'm not uh, an expert in this at all. I'm, I'm as novice as the, as a person that's just starting when it comes to facial work. Which in effect is uh, exactly what I'm doing now on. I'm starting again on that. I'm not happy with the texture on that at all. So some more self-leveling thinner over the top. Just trying to break down the paint now. So no longer trying to smooth it out so don't um, remove the, the excess from your brush just poke at the paint at the edges a bit more self leveling thinner And a bit more. And with the uh, cotton bird. Remember, we don't want to. Take a towel now.
Oh. Oh. Just getting rid of these little tiny bits now. Fortunately, the clear coat I put on top uh, to protect the bodywork earlier has in fact done its job and it's um, preventing the um, preventing the, any, anything being taken off that I don't want taken off uh, bear with me. I need so we've got some tiny little bits left that are being quite stubborn. They're not coming off with uh, they're just sort of clinging there. So I'm just going to use this toothbrush to try and this stipple brush because it's got quite a no it's a wrong one flow improver don't want that Brush is too big. Where's the little one? Got three. Oh, that is the little one. Really? Um, I'm gonna have to come in with this one. Regaining some of the um, some of the detail that was lost. If I hadn't have done so much work on the um, on the body, I would have just dipped the whole thing, and that that would have been an end to it. Uh, it's a bit more difficult trying to. Trying to recover just a part of a figure it's gone wrong well to be fair it hadn't really gone wrong it's just i weren't happy with it it weren't great let's just leave it at that
I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to take me a little bit longer to do. Um, that was today's stupid mistake. Um, I thought I was being clever, I'd be able to do something. Um, and uh, I should have known better. But there you go. Uh, it just goes to prove that I'm not lying when I say that I'm uh, new to this as well. So we will uh, we'll carry on with the yeah the the fuselage halves now. Um, just clean these. It wasn't a completely fruitless task because I have, um, that was the first time I've used this uh, psycho brush for doing the whites of the eyes. And I'm very pleased with how that went. Um, I think that was the ultimate, uh, that, that's what made me decide I was going to start again because the, the, the psycho brush and the whites of the eyes um, to such a degree that, I think it was let down by the rest of the face then. Um, and I thought if I can get the rest of that face smooth, then the detail work will stand out even more. So there we go. So not complete loss. Let's bring these back. I you normally use my airfix figures for practicing on. I've got uh, a 1 16th uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police figure to do over there. And I'd rather I'd rather bugger up uh, Mr. Jan Zambuk than um, my uh, figure over there. Right, so looks like the seat's gone in we've got the uh, forward bit to put in and then right let's get that done let's find the so this is the airfix kit there's the front uh, section there their engine pieces that though is not an engine piece that's the lid to my brush holder i've been looking for that right, so that's going to go on there it's going to go in like that and there's a clear part to go on this i think but uh, we will do that Now, as far as I can tell, that goes in there. Like so. And the clear part will sit on the top there. Well, what I'll do is, um, I'm not going to put the clear part on yet. I don't like putting clear parts on until they're well, uh, to well towards the end. So that they don't get all smeared and damaged and... Um, now then, is that seam visible from underneath? Maybe not. So I'm going to use a I'm going to use the white Tamiya for this. First things first, just get the cocktail stick out and scrape away the glue, the, the paint on the plastic where it's going to glue together. Thank you. 
and that's already been cleared off it's a slight bend on that actually which is a bit worrying I only just noticed that I don't know whether that will be a problem so uh, I don't know if you can see that but there's a slight bend there see You don't really want that. It's even worse on that side, so there's a bit of warping as well. Um, let's hope that... Okay, so... A bit too much on that. Apologies for the dog. I'm trying to. Hold that uh, straighten that out while I've got it held there. Daniel. Is still there. That's pushed up against there or not. Keeps trying to spring back into it. So I need to try and come in with a bit of thinner stuff, I think, at the top there just to uh, Unfortunately, because it's bent, I've got to try and hold it straight and hold it down till the glue is strong enough to stop it from springing back. Um, it's in a tight, little bit of an awkward position to get a clamp.
right so what i can do there is just leave that it's it's held enough at the top at the moment where where it started um there is a slight curve at the bottom it's not very well glued down there what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and let that top set first and then i can come down and push this in a bit and and re-glue that so let's just wait and see what happens with that uh, move on to the next step and uh, come back so the next step is telling us we want um, 49 48 and 51 48 49 and 51 Well, I've got the uh, airfix kit is behind me with all the the parts on. Because I've got the uh, polycarpoff currently in the rack. Um, there we go, it's on this one. Uh, don't forget our. Oh, where's the sprue? Cut has gone. Don't forget our Soviet build, any armor, any aircraft you want. Um, first prize is a pair of uh, display sprue nippers. Um, I'm not sure what is happening at the moment about the the best uh best armor best aircraft because um i'm about the i think i'm the only admin left now they've uh, there was some quarreling and as a result i was unable to uh resolve it some some members were arguing between themselves and um as a result they left which is uh, unfortunate they didn't have to leave i didn't i told them to, to stay but uh, they couldn't find a peaceful resolve and um one of them's left i think the other one's still with us but uh right i'm missing a bit uh, 49 of course so it may be that uh, there will only be the main prize now I'll see I've, I've got a couple of bits that I can uh, use there's that times two because there's two of these parts if that's them 49 yeah 49 there's another set for the other side i'm reckoning i'm going to cut both of them off there Night. A little bit of flash at the end. Uh, wasn't anticipating getting this far today, so I was only really thinking I'd get the figure done. There's only a little bit here, seeing my needs cleaning off. 
How's that? Uh, yes, that's Flash. <laughs> I thought for a minute there it was part of it. And get rid of that. And that. Flash everywhere. clean up with the superb um flexi file system superb at doing this sort of thing these round um very delicate objects this is where i snap it <laughs> yeah just just a brilliant job brilliant one I'll just go around and remove the paint from the areas where it's going to be glued it's not a bulk head so we've got to remove the doesn't matter if there's a tiny little bit left over like there There we go, that's done. And then we've got now this one. Let's just reel the selection it's quite a just need to make sure what I'm removing is uh, is actually a mark from molding because on this kit some of the uh some of the marks on here that are left over from molding are so bad that they actually look like they're supposed to be there they look like switches or buttons or you know what i mean it's like incredible that um you're never actually sure Right, we've got two on the bottom here that look like they're proper supposed to be some sort of pegs that these sit on. Um, they're not on the drawing though, so I'm going to remove them. This could go wrong for me, but we'll see. Just like that. Well, apparently, this comes in under here, like so. Mm 
I'm doing that right. In there, yeah. And under there. That's got to be right, surely. I might have it on back to front, right? On there. Let me just get that. It might be a message from Andrew telling me something's wrong with the broadcast. Not sure what you're going on about michael there is there is no you, you have no fault in the hangout i was just saying that uh two members had fallen out um uh i had to say something because one of those members was admin And as a result, one, one of them left the group. So there is, is no fault that I'm aware of. I'm just letting people know. Right. Um, I'm not sure how that's supposed to go, really. Uh, All right, let's just, uh, this might clear this up a little bit. So on the next section, we've got actually a cross-section drawing showing. Um, that helps a bit actually now, yeah. So I can see that it's meant to go uh, right. So it's actually meant to be upright. Um, so that goes there. I get it now. Right, I get it, I get it, I get it. So that goes there. It's not a very good No. So that's supposed to be that that piece doesn't go like that though. That piece isn't that shape. Let's try and get this in here and see what it looks like in here because um, it won't do what um, so that's supposed to go in there like that. Right. And that goes in there. Can we see that? Let me just bring that up a little bit. Let me just try and bring that in so you can see. And then that sits in there. Like that. And then... Right, I think we're going to have to... maybe try and position this after this these have gone in because um
Right. Let's get some uh, glue on that. Do with it. Just uh, try and hold that in there. Right. So that's another another one of the bulkheads in. I don't really want to start pushing this in until that's um, that's uh, gone off a bit. I'm going to. What I do normally do um, on most kits I buy, when you get holes that are for peg, pegs to go in or so, I will normally either open up the hole a bit with a, the with a drill bit, just go in and um, just very slightly, not a massive amount, um, because obviously once you get a layer of paint on, um, the diameter is much smaller. Or in this case, where I've forgotten to do that, I'll just come along and shave a little bit off the where the peg is so that when it comes to slotting in there's no problem because normally with these kits they're done to such a great uh, tolerance as a rule even the old kits that uh, like I say, once the paint's on, the hole is that much smaller, and then you can't get your locating tags in. Michael, just forget about it. It's done. It's over. We move on. Thank you. Good man. I don't know whether any of you, um, Michael's uh, one of the members of the Hangout. We have a Hangout every night, um, and Michael's got some beautiful work that he does. He does a lot of his own, um, what people what people perceive to be decals, and they're not actually decals. They're, they're hand, 
hand painted um, artwork he does on his planes, his jets. Um, so, you know, if uh, I believe his channel is Keep It to a Hobby, um, I think. Michael will have to confirm that, but I think it's Keep It to a Hobby. Um, and he's he's got some really great stuff on there. Uh, I don't know whether he's put it up on his channel yet, um, but certainly if you have a look round, you will see some of his work. My favourite is the uh, he's he's done tiger. He does a lot of tiger meat stuff, and my favourite is the ghost tiger in green. Um, I can't remember. The, all the details but it's stunning absolutely stunning and uh yeah it was all painted himself by hand amazing and we've got quite a few uh people that uh, are really talented in in the group um you know so if you're in if you're in our group have a look round. Have a look round other people's work. You know, other members. Just it doesn't take five minutes. I often do it. Just click on a member's name, uh, find their profile. If they've got a channel, go and have a look. Uh, you know, and you can sometimes see some really stunning stuff because not all people put their work up. They'll 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 put it in, in on their channel on their Facebook page or whatever, but they won't go and put it up anywhere else. Um, and and that it, you know it's really quite good some of it, but uh, yeah you should if you're a member you should do that if you're not a member why not obvious question that's the obvious question. Um, we uh, have nightly hangouts most nights. Um, we have a laugh. I like to think we have a laugh anyway. Oh, and I forgot it's Michael's birthday. Um, I'm sure it's Michael's birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, if he's watching. I think he is watching. Sure he said it was today. So now we're going to try and slot this framework in to get a better idea. I don't really want to glue this at the moment because I'm really trying to figure out how this goes. So, right, that goes like that. I see that. So, already we've got a bit of flash in the way. And this is why we do dry fitting. So, now I can see that already there's some flash in the way there uh, which we'll need turning off and then obviously this goes in now this is supposed to go in oh, right let me just check these instructions so i've got a couple of locating yeah so that's supposed to go in right okay I don't see it. I don't see how it can do that. It's supposed to go in upright. The only way that will work is if that goes in there like that. Of there like that it's not going to go in yeah Mm. 
All right. So that's got to go like that, really. So they want it upright at 90 degrees to the body. I've got, I've got, uh, sorry, I've got a, a sprue in the way here. Uh, so they want it to go like that. But in their drawing, this sits forward underneath that lug. And if you put it that way, how they say it's actually like that um so i'm gonna go with the drawing let me see Now then, let's look at the paint before I put that in. Can this be painted before or so apparently everything is number eleven. Right, everything's number 11. My only problem is I don't know which colour I used in the end. Right. Clean this flash off. And a bit off the top.
So just for while well, that's where's the uh, tweezers gone with the self? What's it in hinge? Okay, it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna need it. There we go. We're going to come in with this. This is proving to be very awkward. Right, there we go. Yes, I am going to need that uh, set of tweezers just to apply a little bit of pressure. If you don't own a pair of these when I find them, you should certainly invest in a pair. Right, I've got two pairs. I was looking for the smaller pair, but basically they're self-closing and they're great for when you've got little things like this. You can just come along and and grip them like that. Um, but I really wanted the smaller ones because the smaller ones are, are good enough to come in just over the top like that. They're just going to keep popping off. Oh, so much junk here. Ow. But, um, ah, they're right in front of me, blinking eyes. There we go. So we'll put that down there. And then we'll just go back over that seam that's not over the tweezers and we'll put a dab on the back of that hole just give that a Give that a minute or two just to so that it goes off and then I can glue that. I'm not quite right on this still. I foresee problems when it comes to putting the two halves together on this. Let's try and push that back a little bit. We may have difficulty putting them two halves together I hope not
Yeah, that's holding quite. Didn't need it on there long. I just wanted to. Unfortunately, though, this is still not quite right. And that's the problem. I see this falling off when I correct this, so it's not. I need to right. So I think you actually, actually, that is there to bend that in to, I think that's actually what that's supposed to do. Because if you look at it from the front, it doesn't, it's skew with, it's not, it's not uh, dead centre, is it? Clearly, that's not right. So when you pull this down to seat it, it brings this uh, cradle type thing in. And I think once that's glued down, the cradle is then in the right position. So I'm trying to think of the best angle to show you the cradle moving. So let's go at it from this side. Um, and then, see, that's it glue that down in onto the fuselage and it brings that chassis in which i think then the engine sits on it and once you've done that then it is central so um these unfortunately are things that you can't see in instructions So uh, that is my best guess. Um, obviously, I'm differing from what the instructions are saying. But that's what I'm going to go with. Unless, of course, that's meant to be free. And the minute the engine goes in, it all pulls it all together. No, no. Right, let's not glue it in for now. So the engine's going in next, which has all been done. That was built up in the early stages. And that is going to go in. Hold on a minute. The picture looks slightly different. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. I have. 
actually I'm not sure I missed it I think a piece fell off when I was yeah there it is that was it I didn't glue it on because uh, I needed to paint it first so are we saying I'm just going to skip back an hour a bit because uh, obviously I forgot to put that piece on it's all together though so um, that indeed goes there like that okay and then that yeah okay Right, I should have, should have, would have, could have, should have filled this. Just removing a bit of paint. got a nasty gap there now the question is yeah I'm gonna do something about that because it's not it's not allowing me to have a flush finish so it's sort of tilting like that against the wall exaggerated when I need it to be flush so I'm gonna use the uh, Check that fit. Look through. it's not a very strong join that because it's still going off the glue that I had in there initially Uh, Rob, can't you attach to the engine first? Oh, you mean these, um, this framework here? Yeah. Um, 
I suppose it's an option, but I think if I'd have done that, it would have been much, much more difficult to get it in lined up all in here. Uh, having said that, I don't exactly know that, but um, I mean, it wasn't so much that it was a problem um, to fit. It was just that the instructions were a bit vague they uh you can't get that piece in the way they say without s something being wrong um so i've I i've took a gamble really and hoped that this is supposed to be upright rather than leaning forward um Now that, I think, let me just double check where that has to sit. So we're on a dry... Um, <laughs> that's come out, popped out of there again. Wow, this is um This is going to be an awkward fit. Uh, I don't really want to fit this now because I've got to paint this framework, which is going to be a bloody nightmare. fits forward like that I'm a bit stumped. Right, we're okay that side. I need to look at further pictures. So it needs to be round about there on the back.
Click on there. Right, I think we're going to have to take the opportunity to glue this in um, because it's going to be. Can we get a picture of the other side of the engine? Need a picture of the other side of the engine, really. It's not going to give me it. No. No, it's not giving me it. Uh, right. Okay. 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 Let's think. Right. I'm not gluing that in yet. I'm not prepared to commit yet. Now let's have a look at what about access for painting. on there Right, first things first, let's get this back bit glued on properly because that came off. The glue join wasn't very good. that top dead center there because it would be leave that to go off uh, right what I'm going to do moving forward I'm going to paint this framework here in situ so to speak I'm going to paint that I'm going to paint this framework here because um, I think it's just going to be too difficult to get at once it's together then um, I'm going to, I don't know why they have you putting it together in this way. I'm going to come in from the side and instead of, because they've got you trying to come in the top down and in when really you just need to drop it into the side like so. Very carefully in there like that. And then... I will glue these all in at that point. Um, so I'm going to glue these, but I'm not going to glue in these little intersections here. Um, 
so that's the plan let's get the paint i'm just going to do it by hand uh, now my guess is i use the dark green vallejo paint that color don't look the same that can't be it no that's not the same so it must have been one of the mid colors but i don't think i've got it No, uh, hold on a second. As I recall, um, one of you kind chaps gave me some advice and told me to use cockpit green. Yeah, that looks better. Which is what I'm going to use. Just touch up a little bit here where I scratched it earlier by mistake. And again, just a tiny little bit on the firewalls or bulkheads or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. 
Right. That's that framework done there. Let's come and do this one. Probably going to have to come back and do another coat on this one. Um, I haven't primed it, <laughs> nor to me. Don't worry, I usually prime it. all the important bits. I don't always do the little bits. Um, Dog hairs. I hate dog hairs. They're, they're such um, a problem when you're modelling. Um, trouble is, I like dogs more than I hate dog hairs. So, can't really win. It's getting very hot here. I think I don't know what the temperature is. Uh, it's supposed to be up to 29 degrees today. Uh, Rob's gone to his workbench. Uh, I don't know what don't know what he's building, but uh, I have to have a look. I have to take the time to go and look at some of. Uh, some of my the subscribers work that on there might as well do this one um, while we're at it because it's good no no we can't it's got loads of flash on it uh, right if we quick we might be able to everything off so that it can be painted uh, like that. that bit's good to go
Uh, and... Wow, I didn't realise it was that time. Um, three o'clock already. I really didn't realise that was the time. So I'm just going to paint this and then I have to go because medication needs taking. The dogs need feeding. Um, leave a little bit at the top of this one because it's uh, it's got to be Uh, need to put that so I'm going to put that on there to dry this best place for it. Um, so thanks for watching. Oh, it's been a long one. Um, we got quite a bit done. We got off to that bad start with the, the, the face on the uh figure, but I don't think I'm going to include the figure in this kit anyway. Um, it was just a, like a little bit of a practice for me. Um, Daniel, And once again, I have that beautiful point on the brush. And they're Airfix uh, detail set brushes, they are. Um, lots of people have moaned when I say I've got them. They go, oh, they're rubbish. I can tell you that I've had these detail brushes for about two years now. And the Calibri ones I bought, which is supposed to be far better, they're all in that lunchbox I showed you earlier, apart from one. These are all still the original brushes um, that I bought. So, I mean, take from that what you will. Um, you know, to me, that that's proof enough. Maybe I was lucky, maybe I got a good batch. right so as i say thank you for watching um we've done quite a bit um or have we yeah we'll say we've done quite a bit and uh don't forget to stay you know uh keep a look out the next one won't be so long now before the next one um and uh hopefully things will start speeding along now um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.